Hello everybody, my name is Patrick from Arc Electronics in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm a drone engineer and today I'm going to talk about how to do precision landing using ROS2 and PX4 uh, in simulation and on hardware as well. Previously I made a tutorial about how to do custom modes in PX4 using ROS2 and ROS2 PX4 interface library. I also showed you how to do a Roku marker detection uh, using ROS2 and PX4. Today we are going to combine these two things and perform precision landing, which means that we are going to fly above uh, like a field or like in simulation and we are going to perform search and when we find our co-marker we are going to uh, detect it, estimate the pose of it and then land on it. So let us begin. So we can just navigate to our GitHub repository. There is a picture that I think it says all, and also like a short description about the goal of this project. So as I said, precision landing uh, using uh, Oracle markers. Uh, you can just read into it if you are interested. Uh, and then yeah, so with all the resources. Uh, once the video is done, you can find the video there as well. But you can also refer to the previous Oracle Marker tutorial to get more information. So, the prerequisites you need Ubuntu 22, ROS2 Humble, we have for autopilot with the latest version because we integrated uh, a drone with a downward facing camera and a Ruko marker, micro DDS agents, QGAN control daily build, OpenCL from source, and uh, ROS GZ bridge. All the instructions you can find them below. So, once uh, we have everything set up, we can just go ahead and uh, source our ROS just to make sure that everything is going to work. After that, uh, we can clone the repository. And when that happens, we can just navigate into the repository. And here, if you don't have uh, OpenCV installed from Search, you should do it, but it takes quite a lot of time, so I'm not gonna bother about it. Instructions are there. After that, we just initialize the submodules. Uh, so it's just like the, all the dependencies that our uh, ROS2 workspace needs. And then we can just go ahead and build it. Uh, this is gonna take some time, um, so yeah, we can just wait for it, I think. So once the package has been built, we can just open a couple of terminals and navigate the right directories, and we can just make the model with the number facing camera in PX4. Um, once that's done, you can see uh, the drone and the arrow code tag in the word. And we can also start uh, micro DDS agents for communication purposes. Uh, we won't really see any result of that. Uh, then we can start with uh, the QGC daily build. So you can see that the drone is recognized and uh, we're kind of ready to go. But as you see, there is no like precision or custom mode or anything here at the moment. So we'll work on that in a second. Then we can just uh, check the camera image, like what are we seeing now, what is being published. And it's like at the moment nothing, but once we source the workspace and start the Arco tracker, you will see a like, greyish screen showing up. And uh, that's what the camera sees, we are really close to the ground. And then we can just uh, do the same source of workspace and then uh, start the precision landing uh, custom mode. Once the launch file has been launched with the parameters, you can just go back to QGC and then check and the precision landing custom mode just shows up. Uh, after that, really straightforward, we can just take off using QGC or you can also use your uh, controller if you have one. And once we are flying up, up you can see that the tag is being recognized. Uh, yeah, so from here we can just uh, fly a bit away and then we can start our mission. I had to admit that here uh, we are taking off from Arco Marker, it's just like easy but you can put it anywhere and it should also work. Um, you might need to modify where we are starting the search because it's starting around 0, zero for now but same thing. So we fly away and as you can see that the uh, drone is not seeing the tag at the moment. So uh, once that's done you can just go back to QGC and then um, uh, select the precision and custom mode. 
then you can monitor that it goes back to the zero zero position in our case. It's gonna perform like a spiral pattern search there, and but it's also gonna change the uh, height. So once we attack and then the drone recognizes the tag, uh, uh, from search it's going to go to approach. When it's approaching it and it has the correct position, it starts descending and also it's like controlling its position while descending. So uh, therefore if like the like a higher situation of course, for example wind or some other like control input that uh, pushes the drone to the side and uh, the drone can recover. Uh, I have some like some video that I can show you on the real hardware about it later on. But yeah, so the main idea is that we uh, slowly um, but surely land on the aircraft tag as precisely as we can. And then, yeah, so you can see uh, that the camera is also grey again, but we are on the aircraft tag. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see uh, what the codes tell us. So just have a look on the code, we can navigate to the directory in the workspace and in the source folder there are a couple of packages that we are interested in. There are the PX4 messages, uh, PX4 host interface library and uh, OpenCV, we don't really bother with those, these are just dependencies, you can use the upstream versions pretty much, uh, just what's here, uh, whatsoever. Uh, yeah, so what we are interested in is the tracker. Uh, I already made a tutorial on this, so I'm not going to go that much into the details, you can see the HPP file. Uh, we initialize the callbacks, also in the different variables that we use, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want more details, just when we get to my other tutorial, then in the CPP, uh, you can just go to the uh, constructor at the top, and then you can see uh, the topics that we are using, also uh, the parameters, how it's being said, like loading them. Uh, pretty straightforward, I think that. Uh, if you're watching this video, you probably understand the concept of like subscriber, publisher, and everything like that. Then the image callback, so that's where the magic is kind of happening. The error code detection, we are just using an inbuilt library by OpenCV. Uh, based on that, we estimate the relative pose of the error code marker in relative pose to the camera, so we can publish that information. Uh, there is some manipulation that you can see here happening. And then we publish the message. Uh, besides that, there is a camera info callback. So, since we perform um, later on some transformations, we need the intrinsics and extrinsics of the camera. Uh, besides that, we also annotate the image. So, that's pretty much it about the logic. If you are interested in more, just please make sure that you check out the other tutorial, like ask us questions. Uh, yeah, besides that, so there is also a launch file where the bridges. Uh, are provided so you can either run the launch file or have the bridges running separately in different terminals. Uh, also, package attack summary uh, and CMake list. Not gonna do that, go that much into the details. You can look into how like C works. And also, there is a config file. Uh, this is used for the launch file. So, for example, what kind of uh, Arbo tag you are using. And uh, yeah, also, so there is like a separate readme for it. And yeah, let's have a look on the Precision Land. So Precision Land, this is a bit longer, but it's kind of based on my previous custom mode tutorial. So we just initialize the callbacks uh, and also the function that we are getting with our parameters. There is a struct uh, for the arrow code tag that we created. Uh, pretty much it's gonna get the position uh, and the patternions. Uh, and also the time so when it was recognized, you know, that, that way we can make sure that we are not using some like very old data. So for example, if you have seen it like a minute ago, but somebody took a tag away, then you shouldn't land on it, obviously. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. HPP file, uh, all the variables. Uh, you can see the state machine that we are using from idle, search, approach, descent, finished. And um, I think it's kind of obvious what they stand for. If not, just let me know. Uh, I can go more into the details. Uh, but yeah, so we have all the ROS and PX4 ROS related stuff here. Also the data, um, some like logic variables, like Boolean that we use to build the logic, and also um, the generated search breakpoints and the parameters for our uh, controller inside. I think that's pretty much about the HPP, so we can just move on to the .cpp. Uh, this is a bit more complicated. I don't think that everything is super necessary to like, be checked here, but yeah, so 
let's see, we have the constructor, uh, we initialize all the like bx 4 us 2 related uh, subscribers and publishers kind of this is a bit different if you're interested in it just check check out the customer tutorial I talked about this but you can see the topics what we are using then we are loading the parameters so we're gonna have a, a PI controller later on uh, so we have all those uh, gain values and also like timeouts uh, and such that we are using uh, vehicle and detected obvious uh, I think then the target post callback, so here you can see that it only happens when the st uh, search has started. Uh, this is just like a minor change, just to make sure that we aren't using all data. Uh, then you can see here when we are actually building the transformation tree. The transformation tree is pretty much uh, like connecting the like different viewpoints kind of. So because from the camera we see the tag, but we have to have it in the word coordinate. So we have to know the transformation. So, from the camera to the tag, then from the drone to the camera and from the word to the drone. So you can pretty much see those down here. And then once we have all that, we can just like multiply it and then get the pose of the Argo tag in the word. Uh, this is the like math kind of. Uh, if you're interested, in, just make sure that you look into like coordinate transformations and uh, like transformation trees. Then you can see like when we activate the precision land, we generate the search waypoints to start the search. Then in the domain logic is in the update set points. Here you can see that we have a logic to handle like target lost and previous states for it. Then we start with the search. So uh, once we find the pose of a tag, we can just move on to approach. Uh, in approach, we try to like approach the position that we have found. And once that's done, we can just move forward and then do descending on it, uh, kind of precisely. Also, you can see that here we can lose the tag. So, for example, if something happens and the tag is not any there anymore, so then we stop this mission and then we just go to idle. And then once we are done at the ground, we just like finish and the process is completed. Here you can see the calculate velocity set point. As I said, it's a PI controller. Uh, you can see the P, uh, the P component and also the I component. Uh, how we calculate the error and the error sum uh, over time and then how we uh, get the gains and then how we have the control output. Um, the generated search waypoints, I also talked about this in custom modes. Uh, pretty much we just generate uh, waypoints and this is gonna be like a spiral so we can just uh, freely move, along, move around that and when we find the attack we can just move forward. Position reached, if we get to the right position, we just uh, stop and then go to the next state. And the state machine here, like nicer, uh, nice, nicely handled. And then you can see the switch to state also nicely handled, and then the main function. Uh, we also have uh, parameters.yaml uh, and the launch file. Uh, if you want to like, adjust your controller because you are using a different drone uh, or anything like that, you can uh, do it, feel free. about uh, this tutorial that you can also use this on actual hardware you don't need to uh, stick to uh, simulation uh, although it's gonna be a bit cheaper and also you don't need a connection drone uh, but yeah so anyways so my point is that uh, you can use the same logic uh, on your actual drone and the only thing that you need a bit of uh, modification or like services on top of this so the thing is, if you're using your Ubuntu-based machine, it's pretty easy. You can just turn these ROS2 nodes into services. You can check out the .sh files, which have the logic and the service files I provided for you. It's pretty easy. You can just uh, set the service on your Ubuntu-based uh, machine. And then uh, the services start uh, when your drone boots up. I'm using an existing ROS2 USB camera package because I'm using a USB camera. But anyway, so what kind of it depends on what kind of camera you use. But anyway, at the end of the day, just you just need a camera stream and the camera info, and then the same code can work on your hardware as you have has seen on the videos I provided earlier. 
So if you have any questions, if you want to know more about services, please let us know and maybe we can consider to make a tutorial on it for later on. But that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I think we can have a conclusion now. Thank you so much for following along and watching this tutorial. I hope that you were able to uh, get the gist of it. I know it was quite a lot and I didn't go that much into the details, uh, but that's because I have made two other tutorials, one on custom modes in PX4 and the other one uh, on Aroko market detection. So please make sure that you watch those and understand the concept of it. And here we are able to just connect the dots. Uh, you can use this code, as I said, on actual hardware or simulation and you can customize it. And I think that's the nice thing about this open source community that you pretty much can use it for your, your own application. Uh, at Arc Electronics we have some um, like hardware that you could look into if you're interested in it and maybe you can build your own drone. And we can also uh, have discussions on like lots of topics either on Drone Code Foundation Discord or uh, at Arc. Uh, we recently created a ROS2 Discord channel so if you have any questions related to these tutorials or if you have some uh, questions or like project that you're working on and you want to have inspiration or you want us to like make a tutorial about it or you want to integrate some of our hardware into your ROS2 based project please let us know there and then uh, we can just work on it uh, in the future so thank you so much for watching along please make sure to check out our social media and web page if you're interested and see you next time have a nice week bye